So it's really important that we draw a distinction between rare families where the illness is inherited. It's one of these rare but powerful genes causes the illness if you have that single gene. These are single gene disorders. The rest of us have many, many genes that contribute a small amount to our overall risk. And there are um, these risk genes. The most important one for Alzheimer's disease is something called APOE. And that has a number of variants. And one variant is increases your risk over the norm, and another variant reduces it slightly. But that is different from these young onset rare families. So in these rare families, there will be a single gene that causes the disease. So for Alzheimer's disease, there are three main genes, APP, or the amyloid precursor protein gene, and presilin-1 and presilin-2. For Huntington's disease, there's just one gene, the Huntington gene. For frontotemporal dementia, there are several. The three most important are progranulin, c 9 or 72 and the tau gene, or MAPT. So these, in these rare families where there is a single gene disorder, and by that I mean that if you inherit the abnormal gene, either from your mum or from your dad, that gene is so powerful and it, you are almost certain to get the illness as long as you live long enough. In other words, it's likely to cause the same illness that it caused in your parent in you at a similar sort of age. Not exactly the same, but a similar sort of age. So if you live long enough and you've got that mutation, that mutated gene, then you get the illness. So in a family where either the mum or the dad has, has an illness, you have a 50% chance of inheriting it because you could either get a good gene or a bad gene. And if you get the bad gene, you get the illness. If you get the good gene, you've got no more risk than the rest of the population. Similarly, if you are a gene carrier, each of your children has a 50% chance of inheriting that from you. And a common misconception is that if one of your siblings has inherited the gene, you might be at greater or lesser risk. Each time a child is conceived, the dice is rolled again. A really important misconception that it's worth putting to bed is this idea that if you happen to look like the parent who had the disease, who had Alzheimer's disease, that you're going to inherit the disease or that if you were similar to them in some other way, that does not mean that you're at greater or lesser risk than a, than a sibling. The risk comes from having a parent with one of these genes when you have a 50-50 risk, and that is it. It's, it's important to understand that only if you know the gene in your family can that gene be excluded. So a common issue that people have is they think there might be a genetic cause in their family. For example, several members of their family had the same illness. But if, if we don't know the gene, if one doesn't know the gene, in the f your family member, it's impossible to exclude a genetic cause because you can test for the known genes, but you still wouldn't know that that was what your 
mum or your, or your dad had and that caused it. And for that reason, it is normally the case that genetic counsellors will not support people going through and will not uh, agree to genetic testing because uh, it is impossible to exclude a gene if you don't know what the genetic cause is. Now that can be quite frustrating for people and technology is moving on. Historically uh, there, were few, there were many more uh, unknown genes and inc increasingly as we know more genes now it is uh, the proportion of genetic causes that we know about for diseases like Alzheimer's disease or frontotemporal dementia is increasing so uh, in, in time that may change but now uh, the advice would be that really you can only be tested if one knows what the gene is that's in your family. An important point to hear is also that having these genes don't, as long as people lived long enough, these genes don't skip generations. These autosomal dominant genes that we're talking about, these, these rare causes of Alzheimer's disease or frontotemporal dementia. So if a grandparent had a gene, or an aunt or uncle had the gene, but both your parents did not. Both your parents lived to good old age without getting that dementia, then you are not at risk. It doesn't skip a generation. The only way you can take that further in terms of understanding whether or not you have inherited the gene is if an affected member in your family parent, for example, has had a blood test and has found the gene. So in that situation where you're worried, but the, your parent has not been tested, really the only way that you can have that genetic test and be able to know whether or not you're excluding having inherited the disease is for your parent's blood to be tested for that mutation. So, so in some circumstances, it's, it really does look like this is one of the rare situations of these very young onset inherited diseases. So for Alzheimer's diseases, APP, presomal 1, presomal 2, these autosomal dominant early onset causes of Alzheimer's disease. But no one in the family may have been tested previously. And in that situation, the only way you as the at-risk member, the, the child of the person who has or had that dementia, is to know what the gene is in the family. So blood sample needs to be taken from someone who has that illness in your family or had it in that family. And uh, that may involve part of the diagnostic process in, in your parent, or it might be uh, getting consent either from them or if they're not able to give consent from next of kin or somebody who has power of attorney to say only if my parent is tested will I be able to have a test and be able to exclude or confirm whether I carry the same mutation. If it, it looks like that there is an inherited dementia in your family but nobody up until that point has confirmed that there's a gene in a family member, then in order for you to get your own genetic counselling and, and, and testing, it is necessary that you find out what's, what is the gene in the family. And that's typically from a blood test of somebody who is affected. In very rare situations, it might be possible to do that from a stored brain tissue if somebody had donated their brain or for, for, for research purposes. But typically it is a, 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 an individual who is living and affected who has a blood test that confirms disease in them and then you know what's in the family and therefore you can be tested for and exclude that mutation or confirm it. So uh, typically, um, people may go through a couple of routes, really. One is 
if you know that something in, in your family and you want to go down the route of having a genetic test, or at least you want to discuss it further, then you would see your general practitioner, your GP, who would refer you on to a genetics counsellor to deal with that. But often people find out that there is an illness in their family because they've been around when a member of the family has been diagnosed. And quite often the neurologist or the psychiatrist who's looking after that member of your family would also offer to explain what that means for other members which might, might be you. So you might see a neurologist or a psychiatrist who says, look, we found a gene in your mum or dad that caused their Alzheimer's disease or their frontotemporal dementia. Th this is the implication for you. And at that point, that person could arrange for genetic counselling if that's what you wanted to do. These are rare illnesses, and so often, with the best of the world, your general practitioner, or even the specialist, may not have much experience of this. But it is, particularly if it's going to um, be important for life decisions such as having uh, your decision about having children or not, it, it is absolutely reasonable to say, I'm, this is in my family, I want to get referred to a specialist for counselling or for uh, advice about what this illness is in my, fa in my family. And we, we certainly get referrals for that and, and, and that would be entirely appropriate. One of the issues that we'll, a genetic counsellor will deal with or is the fact that this is a this is confidential and the, in the UK at least, there is what's called a moratorium or an agreement with insurance companies that, that having a genetic test should not in any way alter your um, cost of insurance or whether or not you can obtain insurance. It's entirely possible, and you do have to answer whether or not there is a family history, whether there is somebody in your family with these illnesses, but the fact that you have gone forward to have genetic testing should not be taken and is not taken into account. That's your confidential information.